Hey, welcome back again to Caleb Shed. Again, sorry about the noise, it's a two video night because I've got the time and the wife and the kids are in bed and I've been itching to sort of do this particular one. What I want to do tonight, well today, or whatever time it is where you are, is go over this magic piece, the Triton Traxor. So the Triton Traxor is, uh, is really good value. Uh, to be honest, really good value for the money. Um, if you uh, want a track saw, which is uh, just a super duper awesome tool to have around, uh, then then this is this is the one I I pick because I'm a Triton fanboy and a half. Um, but also, the value for money on this is is really good. So this uh, you can get this on sale in Australia right now for somewhere between four hundred and five hundred dollars. Some places have better packages that have got like. Uh, Two of the 700 mil track uh, with clamps and a bag um, for about 500. At the 400 end, you just get sort of the two tracks and the saw and no bag, which is really sad. Should always pay extra money for a bag. Uh, but anyway, I um, want to go through uh, what I've learned about setting this thing up. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's, it's pretty dusty because uh, it's been getting a bit of use chopping some ply today. And it does a fantastic job, it does a really clean, neat job. Um, I've got some big expensive panels of, of hardwood ply that I'm breaking down to uh, to make a nice bed frame for my wife. Well, technically it's for me too, but whatever. Uh, but I want to show you some some gotchas that got me when I first pulled this thing out and, and tried to use it. Uh, and we'll go over how to, to, to do some of that initial setup and, and make sure you don't do some silly things that I probably did out of the box. Because again, that manual ain't got no pictures, so it's, it's really hard to... Uh, to sort of set this thing up first go if you're not if you're not super tool savvy or if you've never seen one of these beasts before. I have played with a Festool one of these and that was um, gorgeous to use and I used it on, on ply and even cement sheet. Uh, changing out a blade on that was amazing. Uh, we're going to see how to do that on this as well. Uh, we're just going to go through yeah again some of the initial setup and how to uh, trim your trim your uh, your track as well. Anyway, I'm in love with this thing, so let's get closer and, and, and have some more love. Alright, so let's go over this 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 saw and, and the track. What we might do is we might start with the track. And just uh, a couple of quick things about the track and then we'll, we'll get on to the, the actual saw itself. If you've got the long track, then you, you're pretty much set. I love the... <coughs> I love the one and a half meter track. Because uh, that would make my life a whole lot easier to have two of those instead of two of these. With just this, it makes it very hard to break down full lengths of, of ply. Uh, great for cross-cutting it because, you know, one and a half meters is, is greater than... Uh, well, sorry, 1.4 meters is, you know, greater than the 1.2 meters that your typical ply sheet is. Uh, the concept of this, though, and, and interesting thing is this will fit the Makita, um, the Makita track saws as well. Uh, so if you've already, you know, committed to a Makita track saw and you're looking at replacement track, you can just grab one of these and begin your addiction with uh, with some with some trine. Anyway, the, the process of putting these together isn't difficult. I imagine you could sort that out pretty quick. Undo some some Allen keys, slide that middle bar in, do the same on, on the underside where you've got an, another channel, uh, and that, that holds your two tracks together. Just make sure you push them firmly together so there's no gap so you don't end up with something like that um, where you've got a crack in a gap in it so that you end up soaring on a funny angle the one thing I, I'll probably mention I'll put some so hopefully put some video up on the screen for you is this this black track here on the edge uh, can you see that the edge of this has a nice thin black rubber edge and this helps a you know break the curve so as the blades coming up it makes it nice clean cut on this edge and the other thing this does is help you know exactly where the kerf is going to be so after you've drawn your line uh, on your on your work or even if you just put you know sort of a mark at each end you can span that that mark at each end uh, with with this with this track and then you can just slice along that edge now this track the black comes out on this um about five six mil initially and here you can only see one or two mil of one or two mil of, of rubber left. When you first set this saw up, you need to take your track, set it on some scrap material, and take a pass. And that will actually take the 
your initial edge off and set it to the right distance for the blade. Okay, it's time for low quality outdoor vid time. So we're out here on my project and I have to actually, you can see here, I've only done a little bit of it for you. You have to actually chop the rubber to begin with. So the rubber here is wider than it needs to be. So what you do is you just do a nice run on the edge with something you're not going to use. As you can see, this, this pie is pretty messed up. I'm just doing a full, full run across the edge of this and I'll take that all off, get it all nice and clean. Um, and then I'll be able to start making cuts using this, knowing exactly where the cutting line will be, exactly where the curve is going to be. All right, so you've seen that um, that video of, of the track um, being prepared. And so now our track is prepared, uh, but there's some things which you probably know about the saw. Uh, so let's get onto that. Here she is, and she's a beastie. Um, love this saw to bits. Okay, can't access the blade um, easily, so changing blades is uh is actually a setting um but i'm gonna cover that in a minute and all the settings on the back before you go sticking this on the track what i what i recommend is take these knobs on the end the far ones that actually go on the uh on the far outside edges and these are for for guide guide rails so you've actually got the option to insert some guides i don't know when you would ever use this thing freehand or put longer guides on it I don't know when you would do that, but hey, people would do that. But these are initially come screwed all the way down. And when that happens, and I'll screw it all the way down on this one, you can see the screw here is now raised. It's actually raised quite a bit. Now, if you put that on your track, that's actually greater than the, the track rail guide in here. And so that actually will scratch up your track. So just make sure you back those right out. They've got springs on them, so they're not going to come too loose and pop out. I have mine pretty much set loose all the time. Uh, and that stops you from scratching up your track or pushing on it, going, why the hell isn't it going? And then you, your track starts moving on you as, as you're trying to make the cut. While we've got this upside down, we may as well cover these two things. You can see this, this, little, this little beastie here. Uh, this is a concentric cam. This is actually the anti-kickback cam. So you'll notice this has got some some ridges on this side uh, and on the other side it's smooth so as you're pushing forward this turns as you push forward as the track is sliding this way then when if you try and roll back the cam catches and it holds tight to the track so it can't roll backwards the other one up here um, is actually a captive uh, well a track captive so it catches inside the track if you have a look inside your track um, and I'll just do a quick switch over. Near the uh, the top bar, you can see this, this, this groove down here. That's where that slides in. It just slots in there, and it stops it from, uh, from rocking over. Especially handy when you're doing those 45 degree cuts, because that's what this is uh, really good for, doing long, long miter edges um, on, on ply boards or, or long boards. You know, you want to get this thing set out to 45 degrees. You twist both ends, you know, you pop it all the way over to 45. Um, but then you've got all this weight that wants to carry the, the saw over. So that captive pin there, you just kind of lift up, turn that, and out comes the, uh, the little metal bar, and it catches inside the track. So it holds it down as you're pushing through, and that leaves you free to just push through nice and easy. Uh, let's just put that back down so it makes my life easier. Okay, so that's just some early things you need to know about what's underneath your, uh, what's underneath your saw. Like I said, lift those, those two, and then and then don't worry about the other one. Now, the next two things you need to see, let's turn it this way, is uh, you can probably just see them there. There's two little, uh, two little, again, cams. These are basically setting your saw firmly to the track. So again, there's two concentric cams in there. If they're set the wrong way, you'll actually bind up and you won't be able to push through. So again, get those, unwind these top sections. Oh. So to let you know, they're the, the the next set in. So you've got the first set, which are holding your uh, your guide rails. Um, the next set are the ones that hold the cams. So turn those and then push them all the way to the top. Um, this will just make your life easy, trust me. So just push them all the way to the top and then tighten them back down. Uh, if you have them the other way, uh, it will have a tendency to bind up in the track, um, I've noticed. Now this is so you can tighten your uh, yourself to a track so if your track has some maybe some wear or some variance in it um, maybe you're using a different kind of track uh, you can set those there to sort of tighten tighten the saw in on the track so these move the uh, 
the cams in, in this gap here around so that it pushes tighter tighter on the track. Now the um, the kickback I find really frustrating uh, because I'm trying to make a nice cut and the kickback thing, um, you know, you pull backwards on the saw and it, it doesn't pull backwards. So if you've used the Festool, for example, it slides freely backwards and forwards. You can disengage the end of kickback. This one is, is sort of, you know, you kind of, it's always on. So it always wants to kick in. I found if you pull it really tight, you can get it sort of to lock in place. And then you can run the saw forwards and backwards, which is exceptionally useful at the early point of the cut because you normally are plunging in, you know, down and in on, on the early point of the cut. And then you're pulling back just a little bit to get the very edge of the ply. Uh, and then you can push forward because uh, you don't want to have be hanging off the back of the ply, not knowing exactly where you're going to start cutting. So I kind of plunge in, just draw back a little bit and then go forwards. It sounds crazy, but hey, that's me. All right, so that's sort of all the underneath of your of your saw covered and how to initially set some of those things so you don't scratch up your stuff. Now, let's cover this little doohickey here. So in here, you have this little uh, depth gauge. Very easy to set, just pull it up and down. Not as nice or as beautiful as say the Festool, um, or the, is it pronounced my fault? Oh, I can't remember that, other oh, German one. And it has this little latch on the top drop that down a bit so it can be easily seen got this little latch here now when that latch is up it's showing you the depth of cut when you have the track on so the height of the track is accounted for in this this little latch when you take that off it's showing you the depth of cut when you don't have the track on I don't know why you would be making a cut without the track but hey I'm sure there's an accessory that goes with this that's for that anyway um, I found that when you're setting it set it with this up so you can find your depth uh, and normally go like a mil or two more but only a mil or two more and when you're cutting make sure you're cutting with uh, with a packer underneath something that's uh, sacrificable so a sacrificial packer or a sheet of ply or something underneath maybe some 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 sticks underneath some off cuts just to raise it up I have a, a table which has some it's a metal table but it has a lot of uh, wooden uh, rails around the edges so it, it raises everything up and so I can cut through those by a mill or two um, which means I've made a clean cut through my ply and uh, all my material and then that, that excess has already been cut as well um, so that sacrificial material has been cut as well so that's that's what that is and that's why that little latch is there so when you're plunging um, and you're going all the way down sorry I should set that to the right spot yep uh, then you you stop and you probably, I don't know, if, if you've got your saw there, you can see the stop up here collides with that piece there. And so that's how you set your depth. Now, to make sure you're actually in cutting mode, you've got a switch up here. And this switch has three different modes. The very top mode uh, is for blade changes. Okay? So if when you want to change the blade, and this is really super handy, by the way, uh, you push it in. You push the blade down and then you let go of the lock and now it's locked in place. So the blade's in a position where you can can remove uh, the blade. Comes with the handy dandy built-in Allen key. Uh, as you can see, it's just here in the handle. You can pull that out, which is quite stiff by the way. You can get your finger in the back, push it out a little bit. Get your Allen key, loosen that, take your blade out, put a new one in, tighten it up. Put your Allen key away. Always put your Allen key away. Never forget to put your Allen key away. When you're done, again, just push down slightly, pushing down slightly, and lifting up. Important probably to note that the switch for locking the blade whilst you're trying to loosen it with your Allen key is hiding back here. So make sure you hold that down to lock the blade in place. Now, the next setting there is the free plunge. So that's going to allow your saw to plunge all the way down to the point of your stop. So going all the way down to its full 116, 165mm of cut. Now, there's a last setting and you're going, okay, what's that, that last setting there? This one there is a handy dandy scoring cut. So when you use that one and you push your thumb in and you push down, it only lets you go down enough to score the top of your material. And it, is, it does assume that you've got the track on for this, by the way. So if you are somehow scoring 
without a track. <laughs> I don't know when you would ever do that. But that's what that last setting is. And that's that's really handy if you're working with some, some very finicky material. Um, the ply I was working with today uh, was just cutting beautifully. I have some <coughs> samples here somewhere. Here we go. I mean, and I don't know if this is going to show up, but this is the edge on this. Like, this edge is pristine it really is i'm looking at it going i i would just i would look at that all day long it's probably not showing up because of the amount of light oh let's see if we can cause it to oh there we go and it is it is it is a beautiful card um this is a pretty hexy hard reply the edges on this are really crisp and clean um i'd be happy to present those edges you know um so the, this the saw does a great job it really does. Uh, I highly recommend dust extraction with this thing, though, because the dust that comes out... Now, because there's so many teeth on this saw, I mean, just look at the volume of teeth on this thing. Um, you just get a really fine fine dust spinning everywhere. Um, so I would, I would highly recommend dust extraction when you can. It does come with an adapter to allow you to sort of allow that to just swivel on any angle and also pop off if it gets pulled on. Um, so that's kind of handy. I accidentally pointed that up at one point and was getting dust in the face. Luckily, I was doing it outside. Um, anyway, that said, what else do we have left to discover and talk about? Oh, adjusting the the bevel angle. Oh, sorry, the mitre angle even. Or your bevel. Uh, just undo both ends and then tighten both ends once you've got your desired angle. You can adjust, so fine-tune. The angle, if you find that it's out from 0 or 45, uh, by adjusting this screw and moving uh, this this indicator up and down. The same can be said for your, uh, your guide here. However, I, I find that they've already pretty much set these up accurately enough. Now, this does go past the 45 degree mark. I think it goes to like 48 degrees of cut, which is handy if you're overcutting. Um, I'm I'm in love, like I said, 500 bucks in Australia versus 12 to 1500 bucks for the Festool. Um, features and quality, kind of eight out of ten compared to the Festool, but the Festool costs so much, and how much extra are you getting? Again, I'm not a pro. If I was a pro, I'd probably have Festool everything, but I'm not a pro. I'm just the guy at home who who loves to make uh, furniture and do renovations and improve improve my house so this is this is the tool of choice for me value for money yo anyway uh, I'll probably show you some footage of me using this thing um, and making a nice smooth cut if you've got clamps you can use clamps on these uh, you can get various accessories um, a right angle that goes on the bottom of these so you can do quick cross cuts on material uh, you can get adjustable angles so you can quickly repeat the same angle of cut uh, again and again uh, so this this tool is is a it's like an it's like an upside down table saw really it it, it has done some some marvelous work really really good for handling sheet material uh, really really good for that so if you're handling a lot of ply and you're finding it frustrating to get it over your, your your table saw then then this is the jobby for you all right so one last thing I should probably sorry I'll do that again. All right, so one last thing we probably need to cover is is kind of important. <laughs> That's the the speed uh, control. It's a, a little circular knob down the bottom here. Let's give you the close up. You can see it just there, just there, oh, <coughs> there, and it goes to six. It doesn't go to eleven. It goes to six, all the way down to one, and back up again to six. I don't know why you would drop the speed, but depending on the material you're cutting. Uh, the material you're cutting and the rate at which you want to consume that material, um, then then that might be an option for you. I don't know why I would want to do it at anything other than six. Maybe you can tell me in the comments below. Uh, but that's the tool. Uh, hopefully you are going to enjoy setting up your tool and using it a whole lot easier. Maybe that's helped you decide to go buy one. Get a track saw. Even if it's not going to be this one, go get a track saw. If you're at all anywhere near sheets or, or long material you want to cut, uh, and don't want to do it over a towel saw. These are just the handiest little beggars. They really are awesome. Love them to bits. Anyway, thanks for visiting my shed, and I'll I'll see you next time. So, you only really need to do one mark. If you 
clever. Especially for pieces that are only this wide. Yes, it's the morning, you can tell. Just get a big framing square, put it on the side, find your mark. That's what makes sure your line is square. Now the reason I'm drawing from that other side is because I've already chopped the other end of base on that side as a reference. The other two ends should be square to one another on the base. And you take your track, not the it very well, and just line it up. I take your track, there's the pencil line we drew. Take your track, just nudge it up. Get it so that it's on your pencil line. So you can see that there's just pencil line all the way along. So I'm kind of splitting the pencil line in half. Now yeah, that's all right. And cut the sucker. Now I've had instances where when I'm cutting in straight in on the edge, I get kickback. It does have an easy kickback feature on it, but without clamps on, chance that it, that it racks. So I thought sort of come and plunge in. Now you'll notice when I drop and plunge this thing that you hear it whir up and down. It's because it's got a computer controlled speed. So I've set it to speed six, which is fantastic. Um, or oh, maybe we'll go to scoring cut, just because that's a feature I haven't used yet. That's designed to sort of keep you out of tear out territory. So, there is the scoring cut. Tiny little, like one mil. It's going to stop any tear out on the surface. Smoke goes in. Okay, it's got a free plunge mode. That's the option in the middle. Edge, it's mostly clean back edge, very, very fine, but that is the nature of this ply. That edge will be out of view anyway, but that's perfectly straight, lovely and nice. 